Could be. Uh, I would say probably uh, anyone w <clears throat> willing to risk or give their life for another. Whether they have to or not, uh, I was talking to a guy on the phone today. We were talking about our military, and, uh, and, and I said they're heroes. In my book, they are, whether they've, whether they've uh, uh, been wounded in action or not. But anyway, <clears throat> heroes. Uh, and what makes, what makes a biblical hero? Now, the Bible does that. This Hebrews chapter number 11 is what we have termed, humans, we have termed it the, the heroes of the faith. Uh, it's like the Hall of Fame in the Bible. And, uh, and some of these people in here, I, I just want to do a series and, and teach, teach lessons on what makes these people heroes. And, and, and uh, Because if God thinks enough about them to designate this chapter, and this is the faith chapter. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1 says this. Now faith is talking about faith. And Hebrews chapter 10 ends talking about faith. He says, uh, verse 38, Hebrews chapter 10, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, this is a text I've thought about preaching Sunday morning, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition. That's not what we do. You say, well, some have. Well, John said it this way. I think it was John. He said they went out from us because they wasn't part of us. If they would have been part of us, no doubt they would have continued with us. They left because they're not like us. Now, that's not, I'm not saying people that have left church are not saved. I'm not saying that. But uh, he said, if any man draw, we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That's, that's what we are. That's the kind we are. And uh, so Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is <clears throat> the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You say, what, what does that mean? That means... I believe in God because of what I see. I haven't seen God, but I've seen the effects of God. I haven't seen my brain. I haven't seen love. I haven't seen anger. I've seen the effects of anger. I haven't seen evil. I've seen the effects of evil. I've seen evil actions. I've seen evil things that people do. But uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number two, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Now, obviously, that good report is with man, I believe, and God, because faith is to God. And James says it like this in the New Testament. He said, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works, which tells us that we should display our faith for other people to see. It's not boastful, this 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 liberal mentality of Christianity that any time I brag on, I know one pastor, and, and he's going to admit the Lord now, but, but he said, any pride is sin. And I said, no, it's not. I'm proud of Highway Baptist Church. I'm not proud of, of it because of me. It's not my work, but it's God's work. I'm proud to be Miss Tiffany's husband. I'm proud of my children. I'm proud to be an American. Nothing wrong. It's not self-pride. It's pride in a nation or pride in a family or pride in a church. I'm proud of what God's done in my life. And, uh, uh, and, I just, and so, so we should, people should be able to see our faith. Through faith, or fi, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Now, verse 3. Through faith, now I, I teach Hebrews chapter 11, and I taught it at church camp, taught the adult class, and I've taught it here Faith allows us to do things that no faith, can't, people with no faith can't do, right? And he starts off in verse 3. He said, through faith we understand. It takes faith to understand some things. I understand things I can't explain. Does that make any sense? I mean, when it comes to biblical things, I, there's some things I under, there's some scriptures that I can read it and I understand it and I believe it by faith, but I, I have trouble trying to explain it. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God didn't make trees out of trees. God spoke that. God didn't make dirt out of dirt. God didn't take one planet and make planet Earth. God spoke that. God didn't make the first man out of man. God didn't make the first woman out of a woman. 
God spoke those things. God didn't take an ocean from another planet, another world, and make the oceans. God spoke those things. And, and so by faith we understand that. I don't know. I can't explain how God done it. All I can say is God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God said, let there be oceans, and there was oceans. And let there be trees, and there was trees. I understand that through faith, and I can tell that to you, but I can't explain it. Make sense? And so these heroes of the faith, uh, we're going to talk tonight about Abel. And, uh, you know, I never gave much thought to Abel until I started studying this out. But old Abel, now God does this in chronological order, and so we're going to take, take the same lead, and we're going to do it in chronological order also. But verse number four, just one verse in here in this New Testament about this man named Abel. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. That's important stuff right there. That by with it he obtained, and we'll talk more about that in a little while if we get there tonight, but he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. Well, how about that? When God testifies of your offering, when God testifies of your sacrifice, when God testifies of what you've done to someone else, I, I, when I read that, I thought, man, I think we need to take note on Abel right here. Well, the Bible don't say a whole lot about him. But God spoke and testified and gave witness. <coughs> now, you and I can testify, and we can give witness to people, but when God starts testifying and giving witness... <coughs> Excuse me. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Go to Genesis chapter number 4. Let's read what happened uh, just for a little refresher. I'm sure everybody in here knows that Cain and Abel were brothers, and uh, Cain killed Abel. We understand that. But just a little refresher. And you may want to take one of your Bible tabs or, or just hold on to that spot. We'll be back and forth between Genesis chapter 4 and Hebrews chapter 11 tonight. <coughs> Goodness. All right, Genesis chapter number 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep. Now, this is the first time a shepherd. Now, take, keep in mind here. All right, now keep in mind. Everybody keep in mind. The Bible does not say, but the, the Bible lets us know something. Abel was a shepherd. This is the first time a shepherd is talked about in Scripture, okay? And so you, you gotta, you, you've got to learn, if you don't already know, you've got to learn to make these connections, okay? It will help you rightly divide your Bible, like the Scripture says. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Scripture. When, you can, when, when, you, when the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we read the Bible differently uh, with being saved people than what an unsaved person would read it. And so we key in on things like shepherds. All right? Because Christ is the chief shepherd. Every time in the Old Testament that you see sheep, you can automatically think, that's an example of us in the New Testament. Every time you see shepherd or a herdsman or a, uh, 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 someone that talks about a, a keeps a vineyard or something like that, you, you, uh, your mind ought to automatically go to, that's reference to Christ. That's already, way back in Genesis chapter 4, that's already a reference to Christ, okay? And so just get, get, your, get your mind when you read that Old Testament and things. When you see shepherd and you see sheep and you see grapes and you see vineyards and you see vines and you see blood and you see sacrifice and you see lambs and you see this, it, it, it's a reference to, to Christ in the New Testament. So he said, uh, verse number 2, and, Abel, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass <coughs> that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit and say, since he was a shepherd, I'm going to go out on a limb, and it's not a very far limb. I'm going to say when he brought of the flock 
I'm going to say he brought a sheep. I'm going to say he brought a, a lamb. Okay? That's, now, the Bible does not say he brought a lamb. Okay? But I'm just going to go out on a little short limb and say that it was a lamb. All right? <laughs> now, watch this. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. He had, a, he had respect unto the lamb as an offering. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, calls it a sacrifice. Y'all making the connection? The lamb, Abel was a shepherd. He brought a, a sheep of the flock. It was an offering, but it was also a sacrifice, right? Jesus Christ, he offered himself. You understand that, that? That he said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down to myself. Now, I know how we preach it and teach it sometimes and sing about it, that they took his life. But he laid his life down as an offering. And he was the sacrifice. Okay? So, all right. Um, and let's uh, see. Uh, verse number five. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why are you mad? And why is thy countenance fallen? I mean, you, what's your problem? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? What's this? And if thou doest not well, here's a good message in this. Sin lieth at the door. <laughs> I'll tell you tonight, if thou doest not well, when it comes time to sacrifice, now watch this. Church, when it comes time to make an offering, when it comes time to worship, because sacrifice, worship, offering, all of those go hand in hand. It's all worship. <laughs> so when it comes time to, to make an offering, or when it comes time to sacrifice, or when it comes time to worship, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. It sounds like there's a certain protection, a certain kind of a hedge for those that sacrifice and make an offering and worship. I mean, that's what he told him. He said, if thou doest well, thou shalt thou not be accepted. He said, if you do it right and do all that kind of stuff, he said, he said man, come on. He said, I'm God. Man, I'll accept you in and I'll, 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 I'll take you right in. But if thou doest not well, and with the reference here and the, uh, uh, the context is the offering. He said, if thou doest not well, Sin lies at the door. The devil's going to get in your life if you can't sacrifice, if you can't make an offering, if you can't worship and come to God the right way. The devil's going to get in your life. He's waiting on you out here. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> and wasn't God right? He said, And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. And he said, What hast thou done? Now watch this. Now remember Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 4 said, that he, Being dead yet speaketh. Talking about Abel. God says, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Though he is dead, he's still speaking. Now, <coughs> Abel is still communicating. Though he's dead, I'm still, he's still communicating right now through his witness because he's in the Bible and I'm standing up here tonight. Here it is, 2023. What month are we in? May, April. <laughs> I don't, it don't matter, whatever month it is. April 2023, his, he's still speaking. Though he's dead, he's been dead for 6,000 years. He's still speaking. Still talking about his witness. Still talking about his sacrifice. Still talking about, he's still communicating with us. God said, his blood crieth unto me from the ground. He's still communicating through the premise of faith. I want you to notice this, where he says, in, well, I'm back in Hebrews chapter number 11, where he says in chapter 11, verse 4, he said, by faith. Now, this term, by faith and through faith, is mentioned 20-something times in Hebrews chapter 11. And it's basically the same thing, by faith or through faith. But now, when a person does something through faith or a person does something by faith, 
There must be a premise on which they act. It, they must have a divine revelation on, on their premise which they're acting, or they must have the Word of God. They, they, there has to be a precept to acting by faith. A person can't just say, <coughs> I'm going to get out here and get ahead of God or get out of the will of God and do all of these things, and I'm just going to exercise my faith. <coughs> if there's not a biblical standard or if there's not something where God said do this, then <coughs> they're acting of their self and they're not acting of faith. My example would be tithing. Over in Malachi, I believe it is chapter number 3 in the Old Testament, God said, <coughs> will a man rob God? And they said, wherein have we robbed thee? And he said, in tithes and offerings. And then God said, prove me. The context is tithes and offerings. God said, prove me. And bring your tithes into the storehouse. Bring your tithes to the church and prove me and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive it. <clears throat> so when a person comes into church on Sunday morning and they tithe, they give a 10% of their income and they tithe and they're doing that by faith or they give an offering and they're doing that by faith, they have a biblical preeminence, a biblical premise a precept that they can go back to and say, God said in the Bible that if I give and if I tithe, and the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, if I do it willingly, God promises to bless me. That's the biblical precept that we can stand on whenever we do. The Bible says, God said, my, turn, my word shall not return void. That's a biblical premise that I can stand up here on and teach and preach the word of God, and I know God's going to do something with it. It may not look like God's doing something with it, but I know God is, and I can do that by faith because the Bible says I have something, to a foundation to build that on, okay? But now, I can't go out here and say, all right, I'm going to go out here and buy me a scratch-off, and I'm doing it by faith. There's no biblical precept by that. I'm doing that of my own. Or go out here and say, okay, I'm going to do this by faith. I'm going to go down here to the bank at Papa Bluff, and I'm going to borrow a million dollars from the bank, and I'm going to give it to missionaries, and I'm doing this by faith, and God's just going to bless me and give me that million dollars back. I mean, people can say that, and it may sound great, but the problem is there's no there's no biblical foundation to build. If you're going to do something by faith or through faith, it has to be a biblical thing. It has to be through Christ. It has to be through Calvary. It has to be through the Bible. And so by faith means that there has to be a principle or a precept from God on which to act, whether by word or revelation, okay? Now, Abel's by faith, when the Bible says in chapter 11, verse 4, it says, by faith Abel offered, that lets us know that he had, excuse me, he had a premise on which to do this. Now, we don't know if Adam and Eve taught him that this is what God expects. We don't know if God told. Obviously, Cain and Abel both knew the right way to come and give an offering. Okay? Abel, he's, you know, Cain is, is not some non-believer. I mean, you've got to understand, we, we've preached about Cain like he's some evil non-believer He's not. He believes God. He's having a conversation with God. I mean, he's not a, he's not a God-hating, Bible-rejecting, all this kind of stuff, some idol-worshiping infidel out here that rejects the idea of God. No. He just brought his offering wrong. He was a religious man. <laughs> I don't even know. He may be in heaven. I don't know. I know he murdered his brother. But God didn't kill him for it. But he knew God. They talked. He showed up to worship. He showed up to bring an offering. But he didn't do it the right way. He done it outside the biblical precept is what he does. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting modern day religion... All right, Highway Baptist Church Sunday morning, people coming in here half mad and half cranky and half grouchy, wondering why they don't get nothing. Y'all listen, wondering why they ain't getting nothing out of church, wondering why the worship don't help them, wondering why the preaching don't help them, wondering why one person can shout and they're sitting there and they don't feel nothing. Maybe they came wrong. Just maybe they came in wrong. Just maybe they came in with a bad attitude. Maybe they came in just dragging their problems. Maybe they came in hoping the church service was going to be all about me. 
Maybe they didn't offer nothing. Maybe they didn't sacrifice nothing. Maybe they didn't bring nothing. Maybe maybe they just can't. Maybe they ain't coming through Calvary. Maybe they just want to want everybody see me. Mm. That's the biblical application. That's the spiritual application. You see, Cain showed up. But now I want you to look at at the the now. I struggled a lot with all this. So we have the premise of faith. We have the piety of faith. That's just a fancy word for worship, all right? By faith, watch this, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God. Worship. Now there's two, two main points to worship. Point number one is worship regularly. I don't, you can't make me believe that this over here in Genesis chapter 4 was the first time Cain and Abel brought offering to God. I believe, the way the Bible tells it, I believe Cain knew better. I believe Cain knew better. And Abel done it the right way. He came regularly and correctly. He brought... A lamb, he brought a firstling, he brought the fat thereof. By the way, in the Bible, fat is good. Can I get a witness? In the Bible, fat is always good, always good in the Bible where I can find it, all right? It says bodily exercise profiteth little. That's, 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 a, that's a word for word quote from the King James Bible. Bodily exercise. Now, that don't mean don't exercise because it will profit a little. Amen. But fat is good. I ain't looking at nobody in particular. I'm going to close my eyes and say, fat, fat, is, looking in the mirror. Fat is good. <laughs> All right. Amen. But he came correctly. His sacrifice was accepted. Now, I know how we preach it and how we've taught it, and it may be right and it may not be right. It's beside the point, Okay. But Cain brought offering of what he tilled of the ground. Now, I've heard for years and years and years preached that God rejected it because it was his works. I'm not so sure about that. I don't believe God rejected it because of what it was. I believe God rejected it because of what it wasn't. It did not reflect Christ. Now, Cain, Abel's did because he brought... Life, he brought blood, he brought a lamb, he brought a firstling, he brought something that, that reflected Christ. I think he done it correctly. Now, Cain's may have been through the works of his hands, and, and I know we've preachers, and I've preached it, and every preacher I know has preached it, that, that, that Cain brought his own works, and Abel brought a, a lamb, and, and all that, and he did bring his own work, but he didn't force that stuff to grow. It just didn't represent Christ. It, it was no substance to it. It was no premise to it. God said, if you're going to worship me, you're going to have to come through Christ. If we're going to worship God tonight or Sunday morning or Sunday night or any time or over here at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church the next couple of days of teenagers, if we're going to worship Christ, we have to, or worship God, we have to go through Christ. And that's what Abel's sacrifice done. That's what his offering done. It pictured Christ. And so he done it regularly, I believe. And he done it <coughs> correctly. Okay? The price of faith. A sacrifice. The best he had. The Bible indicates that in Genesis 4 and 4 where it says he took of the firstlings. He took the best. And the fat thereof, he brought the best that he had. So many times. I, I, I dread whenever we stand before that judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the things we've done in this body, whether they be good or bad. I, kinda, I dread to see how many times we've come to the house of God and we didn't bring our best. <laughs> I dread to see how many times we've come to the house of God or how many times we read our Bible or how many times we offered up a half-hearted prayer or how many times we, we offered a, a tithe or an offering or we've done something for God and it was just a half-hearted thing and it wasn't our best. <clears throat> if it's not our best, it may not be accepted. He brought the best. He brought the right kind. The right kind of faith is a, a costly thing. It says right here in Hebrews chapter, what's this? 
By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent what? Sacrifice. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. Genesis 4, 4 calls it an offering. Offering and sacrifice, hand in hand, worship, all those work together. Every offering ought to be a sacrifice. But we ought to give it willingly. We ought to give it cheerfully. We ought to do And it's not just talking about tithing. It's talking about our service, our worship, our singing. Whenever we come to church and say, I've, I've heard people say, well, I can't sing very good. I'm just going to sit and listen. We ain't singing to you. Now, I, I love getting in on the blessing. <coughs> I love when the choir is singing, and, and I hope the choir ain't singing to the rest of us. I hope they're singing to God. I like riding the coattails of the choir. I like riding the coattails of special music and getting the blessing out of it and worshiping God with them, but they're not singing to me. I want to sing along with them. If I didn't feel like I'd throw them off key, I probably would sing along with them. But we ought to give our best. It ought to be a sacrifice. Offering, worship, sacrifice, they all go hand in hand. The premium of faith. Now look what he says in chapter number 11, verse 4 here. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent. God calls it an excellent sacrifice. Premium. The best that he had. Excellent. I wonder if after I get done preaching, if God says that was excellent preaching. Maybe I held something back because somebody's family may be dealing with something or maybe I had a point in my notes and somebody walked in, a visitor, and I, maybe I thought that, well, if I say that, they might not come back. Don't think that stuff don't enter my mind because it does. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't sing that song because Sister Mary's going to shout the whole songbook today and we've got a bunch of visitors. But I typically walk by Sister Mary and I'll say, we've got visitors today. Just let's see what they're made of. You know, you don't have to wait for another. You got the pa pastor's endorsement to shout a little bit. They've been. And, uh, but, you know, stuff like that. I just wonder if when I get done preaching, if, and not that I'm an excellent preacher, but if it's truth and it's Holy Spirit led and it's, and, and man, I wish I could explain it to you. I wish I could. I felt like Sunday morning I probably could have levitated. I mean, God took a hold of that message and God was giving me stuff I never even wrote, wrote down. I never even, I mean, God was just helping me preach right along with me. We call it getting hooked up with the Holy Ghost. And man, I'm telling you, they ain't a feeling on earth like it. They ain't a feeling in this world. When, I, when, when by the time I get done preaching, I mean, 40 minutes will go by like that, and I get done preaching, it seemed like I ain't been up here five minutes, and I don't know what I said. I don't know what I said. But I, maybe God, maybe whenever we get done with our worship service on Sunday morning, maybe God say, that's excellent. <laughs> that's excellent worship. don't have to be high octane. I mean, that's the way we like it, but that's just because, I don't know, that's just how we are. We like high octane stuff, but if it's worship, sometimes God likes low, sweet, quiet, toned down. And sometimes that's the way God likes it. But we need to leave here and God said, wouldn't it be good God lean over to the heavenly choir and say, that was excellent worship this morning, wasn't it, boys? God leaned over to Abel and say, it was excellent down there this morning, wasn't it? How about that choir? How about that congregation singing down there at the highway? Well, it's good this morning, wasn't it? <laughs> you say, God don't say stuff like that. He said it about Abel. He said, boy, he's got an excellent sacrifice. Oh, Abel does. Amen. I don't know. Maybe he'll lean over, maybe after Sister Holly get done singing or men's quartet get done singing or the choir or the congregation or something, maybe he'll lean over to David and say, I bet you'd like to dance to that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. David may be over in the corner of heaven dancing somewhere. Hey, man. Dancing for the Lord. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent means being of great value or worth. The Cain and Abel both come at the same time and offer the offering, but Abel's was better. It was better. God says that's excellent. Just the way I wanted it. Just the way I told it. Just the way I taught it. Just the way I expected it. Just the way I said it ought to be. Excellent. Mm. Oh, Abel, he's a, he's a hero of the faith. Why? He didn't, he didn't call down fire from God out of heaven. He didn't heal no sick people. He didn't preach no great revivals. 
He didn't, he didn't build big buildings. He didn't, wouldn't nobody have ever known his name if it wasn't in the Bible. Ever, wouldn't nobody ever know his name if it wasn't in the Bible. But God said, out of all the people in the Old Testament and all the people in the New Testament up to this point, he mentions Abel in this hero faith chapter. Why? Because God said he brought me an excellent sacrifice. His sacrifice, his offering came and it pointed to Christ. It's an offering of redemption. <coughs> it was an offering of sacrifice. It was better. It was the faith in the offering made it better. He had a, he had a precept he could offer it on. It was the, the finest in the offering. The first and the fat. Hallelujah. It was the flock in the offering. He didn't bring a cucumber. Amen. He didn't bring lettuce or turnip greens. Amen. He brought a lamb. He didn't even bring no salad dressing. He brought a lamb of the flock. And God said, that points to Christ. Because it was the foreshadow. There was prophecy in his offering. Maybe, we don't have a whole lot of details about it. Maybe, maybe Adam had taught these boys about mom and daddy, why y'all got them animal skins on? Tell me about them animal skins y'all was wearing. Daddy may have said, well, son, we had to wear these animal skins. It's my fault. We let sin get in. We used to live in a beautiful garden. But I disobeyed God. And because of that disobedience, we're all sinners now. And so God had to shed blood for our sin and cover our nakedness. So when you approach God in worship, and when you approach God in sacrifice, and when you approach God in offering, when it's time for you and your brother, when y'all come to make this offering, that you have to shed blood because you're a sinner. When you get in the presence of God, the blood has to go first, son. The blood has to go first. You can't meet God unless you go through the blood of the lamb, son. And Cain and Abel said, okay, daddy, okay. And maybe, just maybe, we don't know. Maybe for years Cain done it right. Maybe harvest after harvest. Maybe season after season. Just maybe. And maybe he just, maybe just got old to him. Maybe he just got bored with it. Maybe he didn't want to spend the money and buy a lamb from his brother. <laughs> Maybe he thought, well, that's just daddy's way. My, our new generation, this new way is going to be better. Because we sure don't want to have to kill nothing. I mean, we, you can't be killing animals. That's just gross. And, and, and that animal's got just as much right to live as anybody. But now these vegetables, I'll just pray. We don't, I don't know what he was thinking. Who knows what was in his mind? Maybe he just being rebellious. Who knows? But according to God, God said, If thou doest not well, he said, If thou doest well, will thou not be accepted? It almost sounds like every time you've done it right, Cain, I've accepted you. Every time. But now, here you come in here, Sunday morning, you come in dragging in here, and you bring in your sorry old attitude in here, and you bring in all your sorry old self in here. You ain't, you ain't prayed. You ain't thought about God. You ain't studied your Bible. You ain't nothing. You come in here flopping down. You ain't ready. You bring in your, your sorry good works in here, and they ain't good for nothing. You ain't thinking about Christ. You ain't thinking about the blood. You ain't thinking about how sorry a sinner you are. You, are. you think about everybody else's sorry sin. You're judging everybody else. And you come in here and, no, I ain't accepting your worship. No, I'm not accepting that. I'd rather do it like a hero. Amen. Like Abel did. Man, there's so much in this. It just about floored me. I got studying through this. Man, a lot. Reading about it. Mm. The procurement of faith. <coughs> Notice here in chapter 11. Hebrews, verse number 4. It said, by which he obtained witness that he was, what? Righteous. So through this offering of this lamb, 
this blood and this fat and through this offering of this lamb, he obtained witness that he was righteous. That's exactly what salvation is. Now, I understand the doctrine over in the Old Testament, you know, but, but, but that's exactly what salvation is. We go through the Lamb, and the Bible says that, that all our righteousness is filthy rags. There's none righteous, no, not one. But you get over here in the New Testament, and the Bible says that Jesus Christ, when we get saved, he imputes his righteousness upon us. So through his sacrifice and through the Lamb of God, through his shed blood, we also obtain witness that the Bible says the Spirit itself beareth witness that we are the children of God. So by that blood sacrifice, by that offering of the Lamb of God, you and I obtain righteousness. That's why Abel's offering was accepted. That's what makes him a hero. You say, well, it don't take much to be a hero then. There ain't a whole lot of people doing what Abel done. Hmm. Boy, old Abel. <coughs> it's a great picture of salvation. Mark 8 36 says, What shall it profit a man? He shall gain the whole world and lose, which is the opposite of obtain, lose his own so, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Hmm. That's lamb. Abel's offering it. Knowledge this great biblical truth that by faith we can obtain salvation through the sacrificial lamb. Great biblical truth. Way back. Jesus Christ was not a new thought. Way back in Genesis chapter 4, these first two boys, Cain and Abel, come in with sacrifice. Cain brings it wrong. Abel brings it right. He said, here, here's my lamb. God, before I come to you, here's my lamb. God, here's my offering. I'm offering a lamb. God said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, son, that's good. <laughs> I'll accept that. And he made it known. He made it public. He said, oh, yeah, I'll accept that. He said, Cain, where's the blood, son? Where's the blood? These folks trying to get to heaven through the baptistry, where's the blood? These folks trying to get to heaven through good works, where's the blood? They're going to be just like Cain. God's going to say, I can't accept that. Oh, can you imagine? They're some good people in some great churches that's trying to work their way to heaven. Good, honest people. I mean, that wouldn't cheat you out of a penny. <laughs> that make good neighbors and good friends and, and all that good stuff and, and, and go to church regularly and religiously and, and, and go in there and, and, and do great things, it looks like. But could you imagine a lifetime of that? Standing, well, standing before God. Well, that's why I took it in always. Standing before God one of these days. And God's saying, I see all this life that you've lived and done good. Where's the blood? If thou doest well, if you would have came through the blood, wouldn't you have been accepted? And in that day, they'll say, we sure would have been. We sure would have been. Boy, yeah, that blood, that's important. That's why Abel's a hero. Abel set a standard. That's what heroes do. They set a standard. You know what heroes do? Heroes offer offerings. <coughs> heroes worship God. Amen. He's a hero of the faith. Now notice the persecution for his faith. It says, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh, cost him his life. That was the persecution he had. I mean, it cost him his life. What did he die for? Just doing the right thing. What did he die for? He just brought the right kind of worship. What did he die for? Because somebody else didn't. It wasn't anything he did wrong. It was, it was just straight persecution. And ain't a whole lot changed. <coughs> These people still getting persecuted. Now, we don't see it here in the United States of America. Oh, we think, you know, somebody, somebody don't like us. Somebody makes fun of our bumper sticker or something like that or our Christian shirt or something or somebody 
got something bad to say about our Facebook post when we post scripture or something like that, that we, we think that's persecution. That's not really persecution. <laughs> I mean, it is. It, it is on, a, on a, a certain level. I mean, it's, it's the only persecution we face. But it is. You know, there's people that don't like me that ain't never met me just because of my stand on the biblical things, I guess. And that's, but that's fine. <coughs> because the Bible says all those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But you know what a hero will do? This able, this hero of the faith, the first one mentioned here in Hebrews chapter number 11, a hero is just going to worship God anyhow. Just going to worship God anyhow. Regardless what everybody else does. I told you, I've got, I've got some friends that's taking small steps in the wrong direction. And it breaks my heart because it's going to cost me some friends one of these days. More friends. Because I ain't going. I ain't compromising what we got here. I ain't compromising on this book. I ain't compromising on this music. I ain't compromising on my attire. I'm not compromising on the doctrine. I'm not compromising on what's right. Even church-wise, spiritually, biblically, I ain't compromising on what's right and trying to justify it in no kind of way. And I told Brother Greg, Brother Randall, the other day in our little meeting about church camp, and I said, if you two want to take steps in the wrong direction, I guess we won't be friends no more neither. They said, well, we ain't going. I said, well, good. We'd still be friends. And I'd still be friendly. But I don't have any pleasure with them at draw back. I'm just going to keep doing it right. Just going to stick to this book right here and keep doing it right. And if we're persecuted, we're persecuted. But that's what heroes do. Amen. My heroes don't wear uniforms. My heroes wear suits and ties. My heroes carry Bibles. My heroes are in this book right here. Sister Holly, would you get ready to play something, please? <coughs> this heroes of the faith. Thank God for heroes. Heroes give us somebody to look up to, Brother Matt, don't they? Amen. I mean, that's what these, and, and I'm, I'm not opposed to, you know, these, these, these sports hero stuff like that. If a kid loves baseball, I remember when I was a kid, y'all stand if you'd like to. I remember when I was a kid, we'd play baseball. My brother Roger, he always wanted to be Johnny Bitch. Now, you young folks ain't got no idea, and I was always that catfish hunter. I thought he was a catfish hunter. I just knew he was a famous baseball pitcher. And so that's who I wanted to be. When we played baseball, I was catfish hunter. Roger was always, uh, uh, who did I say a while ago? Yeah, Johnny Bench, because Roger, he, like, he was a back catcher. And ain't nothing wrong. My grandsons, they'll, we'll be outside, and Mercy's got these little old, little old red basketballs and a little old Nerf ball gold out there on the back porch. And, and my grandsons will get out there, and they'll shoot, and they'll holler, Kobe, and they'll, <laughs> that's just what kids do. When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I thought as a child. The Bible says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. My heroes changed. Go ahead, sister, and play something. <laughs> My heroes changed. Thank God.